Hello guys, welcome back to On Track GP. Now you may have noticed we're in a special location. We're here in Motorsport UK to find out just what a marshal does on a race weekend and how you might be able to do it yourself. We're going to be speaking to Sue Sanders and Sam Walker of Motorsport UK to find out everything you need to know about marshals and how they work in Formula One. <laughs> Marshals are amazing. Their jobs are huge. They, they range from so many little details right the way through to some very major ones that people see for incidents, for example. Mm -hmm. So they might be responsible in an assembly area. So just moving the cars to the right place in the right time, making sure that they've actually aligned correctly so that when they enter the grid, they haven't got to shuffle them about on the grid because there's no space. Mm -hmm. So that's a really important job and it's a, a very very much behind the scenes, not many people see what's going on there. Then you might have a, a paddock marshal who walks around to make sure that that's being managed safely and that all the teams are doing the right thing and they've got all the right equipment around and maybe they've got the fire extinguishers in the right place, mm. those sorts of things. So again, it's a role that's not often seen by many people, but it's so important that that's done. And of course, you've actually got the, the grid marshals who do check that they're lined up accurately and correctly <laughs> mm. and that nobody sneaked an extra few centimetres <laughs> or anything of that sort. So those are what we would call off-track roles. They're not part of the, the team that are involved heavily once the, the racing is taking place, but they're off-track roles. There are many others and I'll share a few of those as well. Mm -hmm. But on the track side, those are the ones that people often see on the television. You know, they're, they're wearing the orange overalls if it's a race meeting and they're the ones that will be either waving the flags if it's a, a race where flags are the primary or they'll be pressing buttons if the light panels are the primary and then they've always got the flags obviously to supplement because who knows if there's going to be a power cut mm -hmm. you know it's really important that the flags are there as well so they really need to understand who's the fastest who's overtaking when all of those things are taking place and also when to put flags out and when to bring them back in mm -hmm. so they need to know the regulations they need to know the competitors and they need to work as teams. So um, critical, critical jobs. So those are just some of the race type roles mm. that exist. How much training do they get to that point before they're stood at the side of Silverstone or something like that? For many of them, they might have done two or three years at the least mm -hmm. to get to that point. Um, all marshals can start off by purely doing an online module. Mm -hmm. It's really quick. And when they've done that module, they're then classed as, they sign on with us and they become a registered marshal. Mm -hmm. And then they can actually go marshal at any discipline that exists. And then they can decide if they want to specialise in race or rally or hill climb afterwards. And over a period of a year or two years, they'll move from one grade to another. And they might do flag training, they might do incident training, radio training, for example, general communication skills, a whole host of different modules from fire theory, fire practical, etc. And they gradually work their way through. So for some people that can be a two or three year journey to get to the role they want. Others might decide to go on further and go beyond marshalling and become one of the licensed officials and that's a completely different journey. How many volunteers, marshals do you have, say, during the British Grand Prix weekend? Like how many people are there putting the race on? And that is another very big number. <laughs> <laughs> As a sport, we have over 10,000 volunteers registered mm -hmm. with us. People then apply for the Grand Prix uh, on, a, on an annual basis. And it's only those that have got a certain grade and a certain level of experience that would be allowed to go and take on those roles. Mm -hmm. And this last year, for example, we had just under 700 marshals, mm -hmm. about 250 of them that nobody ever sees, nobody knows who they are, mm -hmm. um, but they work on the perimeter. So they, they are the ones that will help prevent track incursion that was not planned. Yeah, there's a lot of challenges around that. So first of all, the, the track safety team are there to manage every single one of the access gates. Mm -hmm. um, and that's done very thoroughly. We work really closely with Silverstone, for example, in that case, um, to make sure that the fences are high enough, that the gates are padlocked where they should be. And, and we try and you know keep it as secure as we can. It's a very large track. Mm -hmm. It's not possible to do the whole thing. And then in that instance, these people clambered over and under and over three mm -hmm. different fences in order to get where they shouldn't, basically, mm -hmm. and, and trespass upon something that was very, very dangerous. So the track safety team would have tried to prevent that incursion in the first place, mm -hmm. but they never to put themselves at risk. So that's, that's really important. Following that instance, there were lots of investigations that were mm -hmm. undertaken. Even more work's been done on track safety and 
you know, to prevent that sort of thing taking place. More security staff, more CCTV, all of those sorts of things. How much work do you have with them throughout the year, not just during a Grand Prix weekend? Well, the FIA we work with very closely for all of the different disciplines and we have somewhere in the region of 35 of our key volunteers or, or members of staff who sit on FIA commissions across the year. So in the first place we, we're learning all through the year of what changes there might be and what that looks like. But then for the Grand Prix itself, we are contracted to manage the sporting aspect of the event. So the FIA will provide the senior, senior officials, mm -hmm. you know, the, the technical commissioner, the FIA race director and so on. They will provide those top level roles and we provide everything else. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a big part of what we do. Mm -hmm. now, if anyone's watching this, they think, oh, I might like to get there. How, would, how does someone get into marshalling? So what's the first steps on that process? There's so many easy, quick ways of mm -hmm. doing it. Um, first of all, you can email marshals at mm -hmm. motorsportuk.org. Tell us you're interested and we'll tell you what you can do. On the website, there's a getting started section. We can, they can go there. They can actually do anything if they find a nearby club or if it's a fixed venue, they can actually call up the venue themselves. They'll often have a club, a motorsport club. And if it's not racing, there's many, many, 680 volunteer motorsport clubs that exist across the whole of the UK. Northern Ireland and into Scotland, Jersey, mm -hmm. Guernsey, the Alman, everywhere. <laughs> and there are clubs they can go and join and see what they think. Mm -hmm. If it's race events, they can do a taster event. They can actually go and stand trackside with the marshals and see if it's something they would like to do. So mm -hmm. lots of different ways that they can do, join us. What would you say are crucial skills to have if you want to be a marshal? Um, being able to stand outside in all weathers, yes. that's my first one. Especially uh, in the UK, that's a good yeah. option. It doesn't matter what the weather is, you just be able to stand there. Mm -hmm. um, teamwork, being able to work with other people and enjoying working with other people. Mm -hmm. I would also say determination, because sometimes you've got to work hard to find all the information you want mm -hmm. and to, to actually be out there. But just a willingness to learn, a bit of humility. Um, mm -hmm. We're never ever better than anybody else. We all need to learn all the time. So for me, those would be the best skills for any marshal to have because that will get them to whatever level they want. Mm -hmm. It's not all about a badge. It's about passion and enjoyment. What's a day at Silverstone like during the Grand Prix weekend? Because obviously <laughs> it's a bit like Glastonbury for cars, really, isn't it? It's a, it's That's a, mad... a good example. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> it's a mad yeah. event. Like, what is it for a marshal? What, what time are you getting there? What time are you leaving and all that, all that stuff? Most marshals arrive on the Tuesday or Wednesday, mm -hmm. so it, they're there very early and there are lots of track walks and checking where am I going to stand, how am I mm -hmm. going to get there, what's the best way, making sure they've got enough things to take the drinks around with and backpacks and mm -hmm. right clothing and everything. But on the day itself, I think the actual day of the race is the shortest of the days. That's the easiest day, if okay. the truth is told. Mm -hmm. The Friday and Saturday are the bigger days. We are typically getting buses from the campsite down to various locations from around half past four, quarter to five in the morning. So then we're out with all the practice, the qualifying, all the heats. We don't really get much of a lunch break. Uh, everybody gets a chance to take welfare breaks, but mm -hmm. actually we don't normally leave the post for very long at all. And then we've got all the rest of the racing all afternoon. And when the final competitive elements have gone on from the day, which can often be as late as half past five, six o'clock, uh, maybe even later sometimes, then you either walk back slowly or you get the bus back. And, and I know I have had occasions when people have sent me photographs of blisters, which I really don't need, but you know, <laughs> good pair of shoes is very essential yeah. for a day like that. Uh, it's a bit of an interesting journey really. So my family has always been involved in, in the sport, motorsport. Um, I first went as a spectator um, with family, but I've also got other family members who competed in the past. Um, and didn't really have any ambitions in working in the sport because I didn't think it was possible other than going down the engineer route and I was not really uh, that oriented. I was more a biologist, so I ended up doing marine biology at university. But outside of that, I did um, a lot of officiating, volunteering um, in motorsport. And then uh, it just happened to be that as I was uh, graduating, um, the job came here, right time, right place, and I've not really looked back. If I take it back to when I was 13, that's when I first started in motorsport in any kind of official capacity. We are midway through developing a new cadet, cadet programme 
uh, for all of our under 18s, but we've also now got a young officials programme as well, which is in the pipelines. Um, and what we've also done here is changed the constitution so that we've got a young official subcommittee as well, which will report into the building uh, as of 2024. So it's quite exciting. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do next year, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to give something back to uh, everyone that's under, under 25 in the sport. But then what we do have is a number of young officials who are between the ages of 18 and 30, 35. We consider them young. Mm -hmm. um, what we need to do is increase that number quite dramatically. Um, we have a recruitment, ongoing recruitment campaign within the sport, particularly for volunteers. Um, but what we also need is to upskill those coming through the sport, the younger ones, because there's a lot of very experienced people out there. As a young person growing up in the sport, it gave me so many transferable skills that I wouldn't necessarily picked up in school or education. It's more life skills. You can learn theory about, you know, maths, science in, 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 in a classroom, but what you don't learn is interpersonal skills and how to talk to adults and how to deal with confrontation. And there's also things like first aid, instant handling. There's lots of different things that you can learn as an official, as a young official through the sport. Um, and that's particularly important if you're then looking at doing a career. It could be in any field and it's something to put in your UCAS application or it's something that you can speak to a future employer about. So in terms of marshalling, we have something called the Marshalls Development Pathway, which is basically for anyone over the age of 18. A lot of different modules that we've created to support marshals in their roles. Obviously, we split this into the discipline, so circuit racing being one of them, Formula One, for instance. And we also have rallying, speed hill climbing, sprinting, karting, um, and we cater for all of those within the pathway. Um, but what, we also have a licensed officials. Um, which is where you have your things like your clerks of the course, stewards, timekeepers, scrutineers. And again, we provide them modular training as well for that. Marshals are fundamentally the, the most important volunteer that we have at an event and they're there to maintain the safety of the event, feet on the ground. Um, also, we have our clerks of the course who are there as the executive function, running the meeting, complying with the safety regulations that we set out. The marshals are the ones on the ground actually dealing with things as they happen. Um, on circuit racing in particular, obviously you've got your flag marshals, um, you see on the TV where they're waving the flags, so they've also got the light panels as well, um, so they operate those. And that's the primary method of communication between the officials of the meeting and the drivers on track, so God knows how, how fast, how many miles an hour, 180, 200 miles an hour now. Um, what we also have uh, are instant marshals, so that's when things do go wrong. Fortunately, things happen quite fast in motorsport. People end up going into walls, get stuck on a gravel, um, and they need first, first and scene intervention. So a lot of our marshals are trained to deal with that initial response, that first aid treatment, holding onto the head, things like that. Um, but what we also have are rescue recovery as well, which will come along. Essentially, they're trained like firefighters, even though they're volunteers. A lot of them start off as marshals as well. So. Even within the marshalling cohort, there are a number of different roles that you can undertake. And then you have things like post chiefs. So a particular sector of the track will have a specific post chief that will look after all of their little team of marshals um, from that one corner or that one sector. And then you have the chief marshal. So that would be the person that's coordinating the entire marshals team of the event, um, which again is, is another job that people end up doing. Mm -hmm. um, Nothing is, is off bounds, everything is open door. If you're interested in anything, uh, either speak to us or you can speak to a club or a venue, they'll, they'll point you in the right direction. Yeah, and I suppose that Joe Brown, you incident at Silverstone last year now, I suppose that shows just how important marshals are really, because obviously they helped them get out. Well, that's probably the perfect example of what, what you guys do really. Absolutely. Unfortunately, things uh, do go wrong in the sport. Sometimes accidents are unavoidable. Um, and it's the marshals that are there to, to provide that initial support. And the, the marshals that were at Silverstone last year did an absolutely fantastic job. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was uh, 18, just turning 19, um, I got asked to be the chief marshal for my venue. So I said earlier on about you have a central figure who coordinates the entire team. Um, I remember my first event as chief marshal thinking, oh my God, how on earth do I do this? I'm 18. Mm -hmm. Um, as a lot of people twice, three times my age, um, and I'm there, the one giving the instructions. Um, but what that taught me is actually, uh, it is possible. There's a lot of respect within the motorsport community for each other. Um, it's very unusual for people to not get on because actually we're all one big family and the motorsport world might seem quite, quite big, quite pretentious, you know, at the higher levels, but actually a lot of people know each other. It's very small. 
Um, that for me was a turning point and it proved to me that I can do things in motorsport as a young person. Um, and that's obviously given me invaluable life skills, which has led me to working here. So, perfect, yeah, it's been great, that's all, that's been fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.